Hi, I'm Dan, and I'm a support colorist for Blackmagic Design. I would love to show you a quick demo of some of the amazing things that color correction can do for your facility. I'm going to be using DaVinci Resolve, which includes this amazing control surface with dozens of dedicated buttons and knobs. The quality of this panel is amazing, and everything's at your fingertips, so it's incredibly fast to use. If your budget's tight, then you can buy the DaVinci Resolve software that works with third-party control panels from Tangent, JL Cooper, or Avid. So what I'm going to focus on is the tricks and techniques that you can use to make your production have the beauty of a Hollywood feature film. To get started, let's check out the main colour correction interface on DaVinci Resolve and see what's in there. On the left is your viewer, where you can see the shot you're grading. In the middle, you'll see the gallery, and that's where you can store stills of your grades for reference. On the right is the node graph. This looks a little scary, but it's infinitely powerful because you can connect your processing any way you like. In the middle, you can see the project timeline, with all the tracks in your timeline and thumbnails for each clip so you can select your shots quickly. Now, on the left is a primary control, which includes your basic lift, gamma, gain controls, and more. In the middle, you have all your creative grading controls for all types of secondaries, curves, windows, blurs, and more. Lastly on the right is a clip timeline, where you can see dynamics which are transitions for the current clip. All this may look a little confusing at the start, but it's quick to learn, and once you get used to it, it's so simple and fast. The reason why DaVinci Resolve is the standard in high-end post-production is it has the speed to keep up with your creativity and your clients. Now, let's show you some examples of what all this power can achieve. Here's some 4K red material that's very flat, so I'm going to use primaries, secondaries, and power windows to make it look like a car commercial. So first, let's adjust the lift, gamma, and gain to get the primary color correction. If you're an editor, then this is the three-way color correction you'd be familiar with. I'm using Blackmagic Ultrascope here to monitor video levels while I adjust the RGB balance. So as I adjust the gain, you will see the waveform RGB parade and how the blacks, mids, and whites balance out. I'm reducing the redness and adding a little more blue. There, that looks nice now. Now let's go back to the original and do it the fastest way, and that's to use the Auto Color tool. Here's my shot and I press the autocolor button on the panel, and bam, the shot is automatically balanced. This autocolor feature is very intelligent when analyzing shots. It can save about five seconds per shot, and this really adds up in a session. Now, this is a car commercial, so let's make the car look amazing. At the moment, it doesn't stand out as it's blending into the background. To do this, we will add a node. Each node is a full color corrector, and you can add a node for each correction you add to the shot. Now, we are going to use a secondary in this new node to isolate the colour in the sky. And I can use the cursor to just pick the colour. We'll turn on the highlight to show us what's selected. We can trim our settings and add a little bit of softness to soften the edges. You can see there are parts of the shot isolated we don't want, so we can add a window to restrict isolation to the sky only. The first step is, we want to back off the sky, so we're going to put a window with a gradient to draw the viewer's eye down to the car. Now, when we play the shot, you can see the sky is moving out of the window. That's easy to fix because Resolve has the world's best tracker. All we need to do is go into the tracker window and select track. Now you can see Resolve adds tracking points to generate the keyframes. Now, when I play my shot, the window is perfectly locked to the sky. I can still make fine adjustments too. Next, I want to make the shot look more dramatic. So I'm going to add another node and really push the contrast and lower the saturation. Now we can focus on bringing the car to life. So let's add another corrector with a window so we can lift the gain and make it look sexy. So next, let's add some softness to everything outside the window so we can really bring the focus onto the car. The car moves, so I'll use another tracker to keep the window on the car. You have unlimited trackers, so you can just keep adding them. I don't really like the mountains and I need to bring back some detail and color. To do this, I can use something called a parallel node corrector linked back to the original balancing grade. This is unique to Resolve, and I can now easily add detail and colour back into the mountains to make the shot look better. Now, let's compare the original shot to the graded shot, and you can see how much more emotion is in the shot now. That's what grading is all about. I think what's exciting is this shot had five grades, two windows, and two trackers from raw 4K red files on a HD project and it still plays in real time. What's also great is, I did all this grading from R3D files without a red rocket card installed in the system. The next shot on the same timeline is from an Arri Alexa camera, 
and the client is not sure if they want a warm or cold feel. The good news is DaVinci will manage versions for you, so you can have multiple versions of the same grade for every shot. So now I've created two different emotion fields for this shot. I can select between them easily and the client can decide. Now when I play the shot, you can see how dramatic the difference is between the cold blue shot compared to the warmth of the red shot. Now here's a shot from a 4K film scanner, and this really shows the optical processing quality of the resizing in Resolve. This incredible Resolve processing quality, combined with high resolution film and digital cameras, give you a lot of latitude to reframe shots. I can really go crazy here and adjust zoom, pan, and rotate without quality loss. Resolve is the perfect place to get every shot framed perfectly. Here's a nice shot of some boats, but we really want to stabilize it. This is a new feature of the upcoming Resolve 8 software, and it's incredible. Simply turn on the tracker and select Stabilize, and Resolve will take care of smoothing out the unwanted motion in the clip. Now we can use AutoColor to make the shot look nice and play. It plays real time because Resolve is scalable and can use multiple GPUs. It's really fast. This next shot needs some correction on the skin tones, and we are going to use the new Resolve 8 curves grading for this task. Just select the skin with the picker, and then we'll adjust the saturation. You can adjust the curve point with the mouse or the trackball on the panel. To keep the window on her face, we will use the tracker. This shot really shows how good the tracker is because there's so much movement. We want to bring the focus onto the lady, so let's add an optical defocus outside the window to create a depth of field look. Okay, now let's play the shot, and you can see we have created a stylistic type of shot with the lady in black and white and the background in color. One thing clients always need is turning day into night, and Resolve has some cool features to let you do this. To make this look realistic, we need to preserve the brightness of the streetlights, but darken the rest of the image. I'm going to cheat here, because I do this all the time, and use a user preset from the gallery which I created previously. Now, when I hit play, it looks really nice. If I wanted to show a sunset, I could even keyframe the grade to get darker over time. One of the problems you will run into often is noise in shots due to low light noise from digital cameras or film grain. This shot here has noise in blue and it's simple to remove it with the noise reducer control. You can even limit noise reduction to windows. There are many causes of noise, and when shooting dark shots, it's very common to get noise in blacks. Resolve's noise reducer fixes it easy. Resolve can grade directly from raw camera files like RED, ARRI, OpenAXOR, ProRes and others. It also handles H.264 files from a Canon 5D. 5D images look amazing in Resolve, and I'm going to add some softness to the highlights on this girl's face to make her skin look smooth. You can see how wonderful these consumer cameras can be, and like all file formats, we can grade the camera files directly without conversion. Next, I will darken this shot to simulate a shoot done in low light, and I think this really shows the quality of Resolve's 32-bit float processing. Let's add gain in the next node to simulate brightening the shot. It still looks amazing, and 32-bit float keeps the quality through all processing. Okay, now we have finished these grades. Let's render out our project. All you need to do is go to the render page, select your codec, and go. Resolve will often render faster than real time, even on this single GPU system. Most of the time, you can just play to tape without rendering. Resolve 8 now supports OpenCL, so you'll get great performance on an iMac or MacBook Pro, and this makes getting started so easy. Next, let's export an XML to open in Final Cut Pro. All you need to do is go to the Conform page and click the Export XML button. Now, we'll open Final Cut Pro and import XML so the project opens with all the media in the bin, and I can open the sequence with all the grades. You can see I have everything from my Resolve timeline in Final Cut Pro, with timecode accuracy and all the nice grades looking amazing. Next, let's open a more complex Final Cut Pro project with lots of layers and transitions. You can see here, we have opacity on shots, cuts, dissolves, and composite effects. I can now export an XML for loading into Resolve. Now I will go back to Resolve and import the XML, and you will see the sequence open with all the media included. You can see all the layers, transitions, and you can adjust edits if required. Let's move this clip over there and adjust the length of this dissolve. Now we can go back to the colour page and see all our layers and clips in the project timeline, and you can click clips you want to grade. To make sure you don't miss a clip, you can use the thumbnail timeline, which shows all clips flattened out and in time order. If the Final Cut Pro editor changes the edit, you can just re-import the XML and all your grades are preserved and automatically linked. 
When you have finished grading all these clips, you can just export XML back to Final Cut Pro. I really hope you enjoyed this quick overview of the creativity colour grading can bring to your production work. DaVinci Resolve is the most powerful colour correction system available and I think you'll quickly fall in love with it as much as I have.